Hey everyone. Today we're going to be checking out a quill and dagger from Todd Cutler. And I'm going to be comparing it to the 14th century French Chevalier dagger from Get Dressed for Battle. So point about this is that uh, it used to have a really awful belt loop here. And based on the images of the Todd Cutler dagger, I cut that loop off and sort of made my own interpretation of the suspension system from uh, the top the Todd Cutler piece. Um, so don't judge the uh, the scabbard of this dagger by what you see here, and I won't be comparing it other than uh, materials and construction of the piece I haven't modified. So without further ado, I'm going to open this up. Very nice to see that uh, it's a nice hand script there on the address. It's always a pleasure to see that uh, people still know how to write. And there's just something nice about receiving mail with uh, your name written on it by hand. So the, uh, the daggers come in this tube mailer, which is very well fixed, closed with four large staples all the way around the outside. And that's on both ends. So if you'll give me a moment, I'll pull those out. So, even though that took a second, I'm happy those were there because they prevented uh, anything from falling out. This is nice and solid. There's not really any rattling. There's a little shifting in there, but it sounds pretty well padded, so I'm not worried about it. All in all, I like the way he packaged this. A moment of truth. So there's some paper in there. Good old standard newsprint. And then we have the actual main event itself is in this black tissue here. And we have a business card and more newsprint. Now we're empty. So the business card is nice and clean. It's got the Todd Cutler information on it, and on the reverse, Todd's a workshop. So, the daggers managed to poke through the tissue paper here, one of the quillings. You can feel that it's, uh, it's not in its scabbard, or sheath, I should say. So, Upon opening this up, we have our nice brown leather sheath with a tie. And our dagger, get out of here, which is uh, nicely bound up in this plastic with a tip protector on it down here. So I'll just pull off this little bit of electrical tape here and we'll see what's under the hood. I feel like whenever I get these, I feel like they're very useful and I want to keep them, but I have no idea what I'll use them for since I store everything in its uh, sheath. But anyhow, so I ordered this with the sharpened option. It does look pretty sharp. It does have a fairly significant secondary bevel on there, but it's not bad. The point is pointy. The grip is a good length. Um, some people have said it was short, but either that means I have petite hands or it's just right for me, but uh, I don't find it to be short. It's a little bit point heavy, but with the dagger, that's not a big deal. It's not particularly long. Um, 
The quillins, they do extend most of the way past my finger. So I feel like I would be certainly protected from, from sliding up the grip. But um, I don't feel like, as with any dagger, they would do much for you if you were trying to parry a larger blade. The, uh, the hallmark, which I'll come around to show you, on the blade here is nicely executed. I'm a big fan of hallmarks. They add a fair bit of character, I find. And is it paper cutting sharp? It can cut the paper, but it's not quite sharp enough to cut it cleanly. In a way, it's sort of shredding it. So I'll bring that to you and show you. I don't know how visible it is, but you can see here that it's sort of just shredded it. And this is the um, this is the edge that it comes with uh, when you order it with the sharpening option. Now, I can see there are some grind marks left behind. And there is a little bit of irregularity up here, which you certainly can't see at that distance. So I'll come a little closer. Maybe it will help if I put something in front of it, or behind it rather. But uh, you can see there's a little irregularity right here. And I don't know if I can show you the grind marks in the video, but I'll take pictures after I stop recording in order to show anything that I think is especially relevant. The grip is very nice. Um, it looks like it's been glued, soaked, and wrapped in wire. And it feels very, very good in the hand. It's not gonna slip or go anywhere, that's for sure. And uh, even, even just trying to push my thumb up the grip, I'm experiencing some fairly significant resistance, which I like. Uh, I often find grips to be pretty slippery or more slippery than I want them to be. Um, the overall finish is quite nice. You can see some, uh, some marks here and there, whether they're production marks or, uh, things that happen in post, or in, in post, in, uh, in the mail. Um, it can be a little difficult to say as it was inside a mailer. So let's see, I have a clock here. Let's wipe off some of our, our oil and see what we're looking at underneath so we can see what it looks like for real. It's pretty shiny. There's not a lot of scratches on there. You can see there's a little, uh, it's not a perfect satin finish or a perfect mirror polish, but it's functional and I like it. It, it looks like it will resist a little bit of moisture, um, especially since it came with a coat of oil on it. And uh, it's pretty clean. It smells good. I like the way that it smells. It has, um, I don't know, maybe maybe that's odd, but it just has a very nice sort of uh, leather and steel smell that I enjoy. I'm sure uh, some of you out there will understand that. The peen is very nice. Um, it's it's flush with the pommel. I, I think the grind on the pommel is slightly uneven. A little difficult to say. Maybe again, if I put something behind it, it will be easier for you to see what I mean. And it's not something that will be detrimental to the function of the blade whatsoever. Um, it's simply, um, I would call it a preference really, as long as it's functional um, for everything to be even. And uh, it, like I said, it feels good. It feels like it can do what it was designed for, which is putting holes in things, primarily. Um, it's probably not sharp enough to cut a bottle. I am going to try. Um, but first, I'd like to do a side-by-side -side comparison of our components here. So as you can see, the GDFB Chevalier is a little bit longer but I suspect most of that is in the guard. So if I put them side by side, pommel on the countertop here, 
Well, it's not longer, actually. Our, our, uh, our Todd Cutler is longer, but the guard on this, as you can see, is a good full inch longer than the Cutler piece. And I haven't really understood why that is, because you don't need you don't need a hand and a half on a dagger, do you? <laughs> I mean, never say never, but I don't feel like you do. Um, as for blade thickness, it's probably difficult to tell anything at all from where you stand, but from where I stand, the Todd Cutler piece looks a little bit thicker by a couple millimeters, at least at the ridge in the center. Um, as far as actual width goes, if I lay them over one another, I think the width of the blades at the hilt are pretty close together with the Chevalier maybe taking the edge um, by a couple millimeters. Maybe not as many as two, but certainly by at least one. And as for the overall finish on both, the cutler piece is much nicer. Um, on the GDFB, which is the same price by the way, um, this retails for $60 plus 15 on, maybe it's 69? I think it's 60 plus 15 though, so 75 US dollars, um, plus shipping from Cult of Athena, which to Canada, I must say, on a dagger, is $60, uh, which is why I would never ever pick up a dagger unless I was picking it up with something else. Um, whereas the Todd Cutler piece was... I believe it came out to 85 US dollars plus a little more for shipping. Um, so they're in the same price range, uh, give or take $10 um, based on the price of sharpening. And uh, yeah, I think the, the, the Todd Cutler piece is much nicer, both in terms of uh, overall appearance and uh and hand feel it feels nice this i thought this was quite heavy when i held it uh the first time holding it now it feels it feels like it has a little less presence than the todd cutler piece and um something as well if you're holding it like this which you probably wouldn't use it for much but just in the hand the uh the pommel on the todd cutler piece rests somewhere much more comfortable sort of in the crook here Whereas the, the Chevalier kind of goes past that onto the, the meaty part of your hand down there. So even just the handling characteristics of the Cutler piece feel a little nicer. And I, it feels, um, even though it feels perhaps slightly heavier than this, um, that may just be the distribution of the weight. The point on the GDFB is much sharper, I feel, than the color piece. Oh yeah, this is this. I'm I'm afraid to put m much more pressure than a light touch on that because that will go through um, my my finger pretty easily. Whereas this, I can. I'm not really that worried. I can push down on that a fair bit. Leaves a divot, but no blood which is probably for the best. So let's see how these relate. So something I've always found about the GDFB sheath is that, um, maybe I should just say Chevalier, that sounds nicer. The Chevalier sheath was really, really tight when I first got this. Um, the dagger didn't want to come in and out easily. The, um, the cut here for the cross guard is, is not perfectly even. You can kind of see, I mean, it, it would be very difficult, I must admit, to measure and cut each of these um, to the individual dagger that's supposed to go in them. And, and on a production piece, the logistics of that would just be, they would drive the cost up beyond even what it is. Um, so I, I can't really fault them for that. But uh, this is really tight. This is really smooth. But it doesn't feel like can I shake it loose? Yes. So don't do that unless you're over a towel like I am, or you might uh, dent or damage a surface. But um, yeah, this this sheath feels a lot nicer, um, especially on the draw, because it leaves, uh, I think it's um, wider at the mouth and more tapered towards the bottom. And I 
think that uh, the extra space at the top makes it easier to draw, whereas the, the tightness at the bottom keeps it snug. Although it's not holding it upside down, it's not going to fall out. Like as you can see, I'm holding the shape. I'm not putting any pressure on the blade and it's, uh, it's staying in there. If I give it a shake, yeah, it doesn't want to come loose this time. It, it will if you really try. I'm sure that, that when it's on your belt, it's not going to do that. Um, another thing that I really like about the Todd Cutler piece is the, um, the, le the, uh, the leather here is actually two pieces and it's been um, embossed here and then two holes were punched on the opposite side and the lace was put through before this was ever closed. So you have this nice tunnel that goes all the way around and I'm sure that on some level when you tie that with the blade in it it can contribute to uh, blade retention if you if you pulled it tight of course um, for me that's not a huge concern I'm not going to be carrying this as, as an everyday carry item but um, I do like the possibility that 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 might help I've just noticed also the shape is not um, it's not one contiguous piece it's been folded and hammered or pressed hard to say but it looks quite good actually for what it is um, and I like seeing the the presence of the craftsman in the item I'm I am not particularly fond of perfect things I I think maybe things that are, are perfect are a little cursed um, why I can't quite say but I, I do like seeing the craftsman in in the uh, the finished piece so that's nice there's also a little bit of heat discoloration on here, which almost makes it blend to the same color as the leather. Um, although once I oil this, I'm sure it will darken significantly. Um, so as far as, this, as the, the sheath goes, I have to give the edge to the cutler piece. It's a nicer overall presentation than the Chevalier. Um, for sharpness, Cult of Athena did a good job sharpening the Chevalier. I think the Chevalier is sharper. Let's put it to a paper test, actually, before I forget. So I'll do a few with the Chevalier and a few with the Cutler piece. It's just, I think, a little better in terms of sharpness than the Cutler piece, but I don't think it's enough to make a big difference. Now, maybe I'm entirely wrong here because I, no, that was pretty good and pretty quick. It, I think that I'm just folding the paper. Um, I think that's just my, my inability to perform the function and not the daggers. I, it's really hard to say. I think the, um, I do think that this is a little bit sharper but the bevel is much more significant and apparent than on the Todd Cutler piece. You can see here, this is a much cleaner presentation. This is just a nicer dagger all around in terms of fit and finish. This is more munitions grade piece, and I suspect that's because this is made by a reenactment company um, for reenactment use. And when you buy it, it, it comes with a, a point, but I believe it it comes with a fairly significant edge that you can either sharpen or grind just a little more off to make it dull. Whether that's intended or not, I'm not sure. But you can even see when I compare the peens, this one is near perfect and has a lot of attention to detail correcting it. This one is, is kind of just smashed on, which is fine. It's functional and doesn't look like it's going to come apart anytime soon. So here's a close-up of the pommel. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show you, I'll try, what I was talking about, about it not being perfectly straight. I think that's about the best I can show right there. And I think the, the chamfer is just slightly, I don't know, is that the right term? Chamfer? It's just slightly, slightly crooked, specifically up here. Might just be me. Um, you can also see the grips. Um, this one's just a simple black varnished wood grip, and this one is a nice 
cord wrapped leather appearance and and it also shows in um the way that they grip this one i feel resistance just rubbing my thumb on it this one it's all over the place although i think the um plain wood handle is a good base for customization if you wanted to carve it or or turn it on a lathe and add a little bit of a different shape that would be very very easy for you to do um as long as you remove the peen first of course which is its own its own task but um the todd collar piece is definitely nicer in terms of overall presentation i don't know how many times i can say that in one review but i'm quite impressed by it actually um the pictures online don't really do it justice. And the more that I hold it and look at it, the happier I am with it. Um, in fact, I think it might be here to stay uh, in the long run, um, depending on how it fares in the water bottle test. Now I've cut with this and it did cut through a water bottle um, quite easily. I suspect that that is because um, the bevel while longer kind of lends itself to uh, uh, cutting through things, I'm not sure how the um, how the cutler piece will fare. But that said, there is even a disclaimer on the website that says um, the sharpening option will add a, a completely razor sharp edge, and that's fair. Um, there's multiple reasons why they why they may not want to do that. It may be. Um, uh, because there's a lot of issues with knife politics in the UK right now. Um, it might just be a practical thing, you know? Uh, it's difficult to, uh, on, on a production piece from a workshop that also does custom pieces, to ensure that every piece is um, sharpened to razor sharpness. So it could just be as simple as a logistical choice. But anyway. I, uh, against my better judgment, I am going to try and cut this in the house. I have um, a towel here underneath, which should catch most of the water. Let's just hope that um, I don't make a tremendous mess and get in trouble. So first, I'm going to give it a stab and see how this goes through. Now, I'll show you the uh, Chevalier doesn't require hardly any resistance to poke a hole in there. It's so easy. Um, and that's because the tip on the Chevalier is, is very, very acute. Um, whereas the cutler piece, I'm not sure how that's going to fare, so let's find out. Yeah, this is, this might, I, might be because I already just poked a hole in it, but the, I had to put a little bit of force behind that. And then let's try the other side here. It definitely requires more force than the Chevalier. Like if I, if I, now that this is cut, this will be the real test. Oh yeah. This is much easier to, to get into things than the, uh, the color piece. That said, in practical terms, they would both go through uh, a soft target relatively easily. Um, this one's just been uh, touched up, I think, at the tip a little more than this one has, and it's something I could probably fix myself if I was really inclined to. So let's see if it can cut. <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to hit the wall or the countertop when I do this, so forgive me if uh, this looks a little anemic. Now it's hard to tell if all that water was from me just hitting it or if it was from the cut. So it did cut, actually, halfway through, and I, I don't want to say that that was uh, entirely because I, I was in the house when I did it. I mean, there was some uh, reticence on my part, um, but I think some of that is just that it's not as sharp as it could be, and uh, that's something I can touch up. Um, don't take that as a final measure of... of sharpness i mean um, there are many factors i cut that in the house because i didn't want to bother dragging everything outside in this particular occasion but i'll do another video later um, where i compare and contrast both outdoors and we'll see how they fare in a, in a bit more of an open space but suffice to say it can cut 
It doesn't cut perfectly. I only got halfway through the bottle and I wasn't trying as hard as perhaps I could. Um, but it will require a bit of force to get through the bottle um, when you're stabbing. And that's probably just because the tip is a little blunt, honestly, and that's okay. The, the edge is sharp enough, the tip is pointy enough, uh, it performs its intended function. It looks great, feels great in the hand. I'm happy with it. I would, I'd pick it up again. Thanks to you all for watching and uh, see you next time. I just wanted to show the hilts a little more closely. Uh, as you can see on the GDFB piece, the peen is rather large and square and it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it also doesn't look like it's going to come apart. Whereas on the Todd Cutler piece, we have this really nicely executed peen that is also completely flush with the, uh, the pommel. And it also seems quite strong, like there's no, no give in that at all, it's not going anywhere. Um, and some of, the, uh, some of the finishing is also a little more evident up close. So as you can see on the GDFB piece, there's a lot of grind marks left over, which, the, forgive it uh, in this light, because this is an especially harsh light, and all of the imperfections show uh, very readily. As you can see, even my skin doesn't look too great here. But um, this is, uh, part of this is the light, but also there's, there's a lot to be desired in the finish, um, as far as perfection goes. And the central ridge has a couple odd flat points in it. Whereas on the Todd Cutler piece, um, even, it, even in this uh, very, very harsh light, you can see it, uh, all you can see on there is the fingerprints that I've put on there from j handling it just now. And it's the same on both sides. Um, the sheath is making it look a little crooked, but like I said, you can see it's it's uh, very nicely executed. Um, now if we look here, you can see there is no, um, no filler in there. It's, uh, it's quite sturdy without it. No movement or give at all. Um, on the GDFB piece, you can see there's a lot of epoxy. Uh, the leather is uh, giving off these little fibers here. Um, which I'm not sure if that's just because it's the, uh, the rough side is on the inside or if, um, the blade is shearing those pieces off and they're sticking to the epoxy. Um, but there's also a lot of residue here, which you can kind of see. And that's not from, this here isn't from my finger. That's, um, some residue left by whatever's holding the guard together. And that's evident on both sides. This is also very solid. It's not going anywhere. It's just um, some folks will probably take exception to um, what they will consider to be a lack of quality, even though this is a completely functional piece. There's nothing about it that would prevent it from performing as a dagger. It's simply not, uh, not super polished. So I'll also give you a look at the bevel. This is from the Cult of Athena Sharpening Service. You can see the, the quillions kind of got on the way of a perfect sharpening job on this, so I can't, I can't blame the sharpener at KOA for that. Um, they would have to completely disassemble and reassemble the peen in order to be able to get all the way down to the shoulders, so it wouldn't be fair to expect that of them, but they did a pretty bang up job. There is a secondary bevel, but that's not the end of the world as far as I'm concerned. The tip is extremely pointy That'll go through just about anything without a lot of force. I, I don't want to push down on that with my finger because I will bleed. Um, on the Todd piece, it says right on the website that uh, not to expect a razor sharp blade out of the box. Um, it's definitely not razor sharp. There is a secondary bevel. Um, I feel like it's slightly less sharp than the GDFB. Um, I can't say for sure. They perform very similarly on uh, a paper cutting test, but uh, in defense of Todd Cutler, it does say directly on the website, like, don't expect a perfect razor finish. This is a, 
a functional edge, not a shaving edge. And the, the point on this, as you can see, is not quite as acute as a GDFB piece, whether that's, um, whether that's a function of the way it was sharpened, I'm not sure. Maybe I can get a side-by-side -side for you here, if I don't knock my stand around too much. You can kind of see the, um, the point is much sharper on this piece than this piece.